advised. Hey everyone, this video is brought to you by Audible. Audible is offering you a free audiobook with a 30 day free trial membership. All you need to do is go to audibletrial.com forward slash BG Unlocked. The link is in the description below, and now enjoy the video. Hey everyone, welcome back to Board Games Unlocked, and Brad and I are doing our top 10 games with the best themes, or top 10 best themes, whatever. Uh, this was, uh, essentially the, the idea of this list is, um, games that have really cool themes. Yeah, and I went with, uh, uniqueness too, like, right. like something that wasn't, like, totally used all across all, all the things. So, some of them may be a little more Yeah, common, so, so, some of mine are a little bit more generic than, than others, but, like, it's kind of, my thought process was, like, how unique did it feel to the game? Um, now... I did not do, like, best, like, thematic games. Like, I took mechanics completely out of the, oh, yeah, the equation. Oh, yeah, mine aren't, the, aren't mechanics either. Um, and then here's the other question, because we didn't, we usually, like, normally how these work is I give Brad an idea, or he gives me an idea, and then we almost run with it to see what it comes up with. But did you do IPs? No. I didn't do IPs either. I mean... It depends. <clears throat> You're talking like movies and right. Like it's like I'm not sitting here going like, like that. No. Marvel Champions oh. is like no, no, no. Because no, uh, no, it's like Marvel is like it's like uh, I guess. Uh, or or I mean, really, kind of yeah. movies like because I didn't do like for example, I didn't do Dark Souls because it's like that's a Ooh, video right. game IP right, right, right. and I don't have anything. Of course, like I'm gonna like that. that. Yeah, um, there's some that may skirt the line of yeah, maybe like a maybe a book. Maybe sure, a, sure, not popular book. You know, whatever. <laughs> It's, it's nothing big, though. Right. Okay, perfect. Well, uh, how many crossover do you think we'll have? Two. One, two... I think two. Three, maybe. I'll go with three. Yeah, I'll say three as well. Cool. We'll see how that goes. All right. Well, do you have an honorable mention? Yep. Great. You can start. This is one of the ones I think might be a crossover. Oh, okay. Um, my number 11 is a game that I don't own. Um... It's a good game. I know I just never had a chance to play it a ton with my family, and it's Mice and Mystics. Oh, no, that is not on my um, list. It was always kind of a cool thing, because when this came out, I didn't know much about the... I can't remember the RPG that's based with the mice and all that stuff. There's a there's an R, famous RPG that... Uh, I have uses, no idea. It uses with the anim, anim, anthrop anthrop anthropomorphic. Yeah, whatever. But anyway, Mice and Mystics was kind of cool because um, the story of it being, you know, it's in a fantasy uh, setting. This sorceress or witch, whatever, um, turns these these heroes into mice. Mm -hmm. So then they're like the little heroes and mice and everything goes down uh, miniature size. So when you're playing the campaign, um, you're in like rooms and everything's huge because, mm -hmm. you know, human size when you're a mouse. And... It's just it was just a neat theme, yeah. You know, like this could be, and this was on a list. You know, we'd made before. It, it could be like a movie or oh right or stuff. Yeah. You know, it's it's this one could really be made into something, just because the story was mm -hmm. was unique and cool. You know, yeah, yeah. My Mystics, That's that's a good one. It is. It was one I considered, um, but I mean, these ones just I feel like are a little bit more at least yeah. unique and fit my right, my personal right, right. play style. Uh, but but yeah, I like I, I like that especially it makes the theme even more engrossing because it is a story. Right. And everything centers around that story. So yeah, that's a good one. Yep. That's a good one. Alright. My number eleven is from a game that I actually fucking despise. Um but there's something about that game that still keeps me coming around, uh, and it's all based off of its lore and its theming, and that's Kingdom Death Monster. So, Kingdom Death Monsters, it, I mean, it's it centered around kind of that same idea, or like the Dark Souls, Bloodborne, where it's like everything's mysterious. You don't really know what's going on, but as you read more into like the, the different characters or the different items that they all have an individual snippet and story uh, to it, KDM is, is no different. Like, what, what makes this an honorable mention, not even on the, on not, not kind of not on the list, is the fact that the lore is not present really like you have to like go onto their website and then have other people who have somehow figured out and then you know piece it all together right um 
but essentially you are uh, survivors that are uh, that wake up in this really dark world and you have to fight off like these uh, disgusting creatures to be able to make some some um, like haphazard settlement uh, but there's like characters like the watcher that he's like he like he like watches over the settlement and he's actually kind of protecting uh, like he's protecting the the settlement and if you you kill him then uh, there's nothing to protect you anymore so now you can only fight higher level monsters there's people like a nemesis like the hand who is to some godly being that he shows up once in the entire campaign and you either can fight him or you can uh, just evade him the entire time and then he's like uh, and and then you have other like I, every nemesis has like its own really unique and cool story but the problem with it is it's not readily available that's what makes right. it very difficult and and my my honorable mention but god the the theme is just so cool yeah so that's my number 11 sure damn played that one I don't know uh, if you'd like it, honestly. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think you would. My toe in I wouldn't touch much. it. Just, just <laughs> let it be one of those games. Just yeah. don't, don't mess with it. Because uh, I don't have it anymore. So. Right. All right. My number ten is another one that I thought might be a crossover. We'll okay. See, and it's Spirit Island. Okay. Um, Spirit Island's been on a bunch of our list before. Mm -hmm. Cooperative game, but you take the role of the spirits on this island, clever name, <laughs> ha -ha. that um, are trying See to, you, you along with the uh, island's inhabitants, the natives, are trying to either kill or scare off the uh, European people coming to colonize. Yeah. Um, and it's just, the the theme in this is so cool with uh, because each of the spirits play so much like them, you know, like they, like you'd expect them like to. you expect yeah, mm -hmm. and there's so many different ones and different skill levels starting off from the. I mean, and that is another thing I like about it. It's how it actually tells you. Oh, the, the, the difficulty right. and stuff, just because. But it doesn't matter if you're playing the easiest one or the hardest one. The theme is still there, right? Um, and when you are able to, like those examples that you've said before, you know, where you've uh, leveraged one person's power right into another mm -hmm. one, you know, knocked them into the water and then drowned them, yeah, <laughs> you it's, know, or something like that. It's right. I know we were kind of, we mentioned earlier that it's like, it's like whenever you talk about theme, it's, it's hard to, uh, it's hard to actually not take in game mechanics. Like, like take Spirit right. Island, for example, it's like, because the, the different spirits play so much like their spirits, it's just like, you have the, you have the, the shadow faction that is just very kind of like an, an ever, always ever present thing, and they don't really do, they don't kill a lot of, uh, um, of the colonizers, but they scare the shit out of them because it's like a lot of their cards incorporate. Okay, well, there's something in the shadows and people right. are going missing, and then you have the fire one that it's like quick and uh, rages through the island and the the river that just sweeps them and drowns them. It's just the the, the mechanics for each of those spirits just play so well to the theme. Right. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah, I like that. It's very thematic. Yes, it is, and it's uh, and like uh, because no no other game does that. You're right, usually right. the colonizers. Right. Um, all right. My number ten is also actually a game that I don't own anymore. I'm not even a huge fan of it, but the theme is what always because I I owned it, played it, didn't like it. I was like maybe I'll just like it this time, so I bought it all again, owned it, and then owned it, played it, didn't like it, got rid of it. I'm done with it at this point. But the theme is so cool, and that's the others. The others. Kind of does flips that uh, flips the theme on its head. Normally you're uh, you're the heroes, but one person gets to play as one of the seven deadly sins, and I think that's really cool. You have a um, like almost it's not they're not really human, but a physical manifestation of right. one of the seven deadly sins, and they play very much like kind of what you would think of what those sins would do. Uh, and the organization, so it's a one versus all game, and all the people, they play not necessarily good guys. It's almost like Suicide Squad versus the uh, versus whatever the the enchantress or whatever they called the the main bad guy in that yeah. movie. But uh, but yeah, so like they're they're just a ragtag group of people that are under the uh, organization called Faith, which is is really cool like i love that that overarching theme it's like oh i'm gonna play lust and you have to fight the manifestation right. of lust and all of her you know little minions that 
you know, they have special abilities that kind of loosely tie into that type of sin. Uh, I always liked kind of movies like that, like really cool, um, like fighting against things instead of like, oh, it's an abstract thing. This person's a sinner. It's like no, like actually fight, like fight Satan, fight, and right, fight right. all that, like make it really cool and epic and. Uh, if anything, if if the others is is nothing but epic because you're rolling handfuls of dice, uh, so it's it's just neat. Uh, the theme, I mean, the game, I I'm not a huge fan of, but I really like the different type. You have like demons, and you have like snipers, and regular people, and monsters versus uh, the one person who is running just one of the seven deadly sins. Um, Never gonna play that one. It's actually pretty cool, and you can also make it a little bit more thematic if you if you're playing the one, like what I do every time I've played it is I'm like, huh, what if I had to pick a seven deadly sin? Like what? Which one closely incorporates right. to me? And it's like, hmm, it's either lust or wrath. Can't play both, so I guess it'll just pick between one of these two. Uh, so it's I like it. I like the theme quite a bit. So that's my number ten. All right, <clears throat> my number nine. Um, was one of the ones I was talking about based oh. on books and stuff, oh, okay. bit and stuff, but and it's uh, Fire Team Zero. It's also my number nine. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Fire Team Zero is based on a series. Uh, I don't know how many books there are, but it's an alternate reality World War II setting um, where hell is coming out of the ground and into the into the world, and you play this team, the Fire Team Zero team of four characters yeah um that uh they just run through missions it's a it's mm-hmm. a scenario based game um it's really cool because i went through on their website because the company i don't think is a thing anymore like their website's still there but it's yeah. not functional very much right but they have all their audio files on there that you can download oh on really? mp3 so like you know the story segments mm-hmm. that they had you can actually play it and it's like the radio oh like they're that's talking neat. on it it's all like 40s radio oh that's stuff. cool um so I downloaded that stuff, and uh, it, it's just really neat. And they have the, the Africa cycle and the Europe cycle, so it adds a new monster families and all that stuff. It's um, So it's it's not really a campaign game, per se. I mean, you level up your cards. It, it, they're really, really short campaigns. I, yeah. It's like four, four uh, uh, little missions, and then right. that's, you're done with those monsters, that monster family, and you start over with another one. And stuff like that. Um, I don't think it's unless somebody else picks it up or something happens with this company, it's it's yeah, probably not going to be around. But it's it's a top notch game, and I mean it's been on a lot of my lists mm-hmm. throughout the. Throughout yeah, it's one the that, that no one really talks about. I would I would honestly say this game would not be on this list if it wasn't set in World War Two. Right, and that was what interests me mm-hmm. for starters, and then finding out, you know the the uh, uh, the horror aspect, right, and. And then having the uh, the hand management style was kind of cool mm-hmm. in that one, um, and the teamwork. There's a lot of teamwork. There's a lot of you teamwork. Can use your cards to help yeah. out other people, and, and you you really get the feeling of like that this is a group of four people because of how well right. they synergize together. Right, exactly. Um, and because it's based off of a book series, then it only makes sense that okay, well this this person is all about this, and therefore his cards make sense. And maybe they got sued. I don't know. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know because they, their their Kickstarter made decent money uh, yeah. when they did that last Kickstarter and it fulfilled. But then That's they true. just they, they just psh, yeah. I don't I don't know what happened. But yeah, the fact that it's in World War II and whenever you take because whenever you take like like history and incorporate something that's more modern. Like I mean I, I know horror is not modern, but the the hell aspect almost makes right. makes it to where it kind of is uh, I don't know if that makes any sense but it's it's just really cool because no one ever does like uh, those types of uh, uh, crossovers um, like I said the others that's set in modern day yeah. so they yes. have they have you know uh, tactical beams and and guns I mean they have guns in this one but it's like uh, machine guns and all these futuristic cybernetic legs and things like that which is something wrong with that but I love the idea of like okay well they don't have the technology advancement so how are they gonna right. how are they gonna <clears throat> overcome um, and it's all you can't that that was the other thing I liked about that game that yeah, I know it brought in mechanics with it a little bit but like you you need to stay together yeah you know because 
the, the monsters are just too they're, they're too much swarming and, and you gotta you gotta really work together mm -hmm. it brings a lot of and it works real well solo kind of, because everybody's working close you know right yeah so if one person goes off it's just like uh dude like stay with your friends <laughs> maybe we'll gonna flip <laughs> <laughs> right oh god I mean, yeah sorry you you fell under a it was a, a, a carport and it crushed, crushed you you died the objectives were cool in it though too like they're not mm -hmm. stupid scenarios like right you're trying to find the the propeller or whatever get the boat to get across the right one, and then the you know you're yeah they're trying to find somebody that's stranded yeah. and it's it's a real shame I, I was actually gonna try and play some of the the downloaded stuff but to go on the website, you have to create an account, and I'd have to. I'd have to. Uh, and I'm like, I don't want to create an account. I'd have to find it on my phone to do it. That's yeah, not... it's not. Eh, just trust us. It's yeah. cool. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was both our number nine. So I guess you can jump to your number eight. All right, my number eight is another game that's been on a lot of my lists. Um, it's Shadows of Brimstone. Okay. Um, <clears throat> this because it has every theme. <laughs> like, I get. Yeah. I mean, it's it's base basic Western. I know they have the Asian. Japanese, oh, Asian, Forbidden Fortress, core, is that core, yeah, core set or whatever. But yeah. I use it as another world because you're pretty much going into the mines to stop the the monsters and horrors. But then there's portals, and depending on how, how what expansions you have, there's other world expansions. So if you go through a portal, you could end up in a jungle. You could end up in this futuristic uh, robot area, which is now turning into Valhalla. Um, you could turn mm. into uh, you can get on a spaceship. You can be cowboys that go onto a damn spaceship with zombie astronauts. You can go into the canyon to uh, future, uh, the uh, like a post-apocalyptic future yeah. uh, deal. There, it's just there's so much stuff with this game. I mean, literally, I've spent so much money on this game, <laughs> but it's just neat because you uh, have your cowboys going into these scenarios right. and like you just picture what they would do like you see, like one of the characters I've made has a laser sword that he picked up mm -hmm. so it's almost like a lightsaber he's it's like, like yeah, what would a six cowboy shooter do and that? a lightsaber right. you know but it's just it's just cool because it's all these different that's true that's a good one mixed that's together it's a good pick um, and I also like that uh, because there's so much stuff you can do between scenarios when you go to town and stuff you also mutate so then your characters will have mutations. You may mm -hmm. have a tentacle arm or yeah. or I have a I have another body, uh, like a humanoid coming out of my torso, and you can give him a gun. <laughs> so it's like, if you've seen Total Recall, that Quato. I've actually never seen Total okay. Recall. There's like this little baby looking thing that comes out, it's out, out of this guy's chest. So now I'm like a cowboy. I have a mm -hmm. tentacle mustache, I have horns, um, I have rock skin, and I have a uh, another humanoid that has a six shooter. That's so <laughs> and, cool. So I mean, you just mutate. You can cure mutations. It, right. It, it's almost like an open world. Almost do whatever the hell you want, mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, but just throwing in future with you know. Yeah. There's, there's all these rumors about what the next sets eventually may be after I mean, three years when the next set finally delivers. Like the, the people want prehistoric to bring yeah, more that'd be dinosaur. Cool. Aspects yeah, there's not a whole lot of dinosaur. There are raptor swamp raptors. Oh, okay. But it's not like. You yeah. can really get some dinosaur action going, and man, yeah. I wonder if they did if they because in the in the latest Kickstarter, did they do an all in for previous sets too? No, no. I don't believe so. Yeah, I never really paid that much attention. I just got the adventure right. stuff, but but no. And then they had all these enemy sets that popped out that even had so like they added to the world. So there's like the Hellfire Succubi. There's these really these naked demon chicks, right? But then there is the uh, the cavalry. I can't remember what they call them, but it's they're like skeleton Civil War soldiers, and they have Civil War cannons, and you know it's just it's so much crazy shit. But would, when you pull cards for your encounters, mm -hmm. anything can pop up, right? You know, and because they're coming from portals, right? Yeah, there's yeah. portals, and yeah, it's it's, 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 it's flying bizarre. frogs by far best game that oh, they've yeah. done, and I it's think. their most supported. I think yeah. like, they've put out so much crap for that game, right? And it's just nuts yeah and i think it, i think the the really cool thing because in in the um yeah i know in city of angels and uh uh swamps of death i think you're they were both still you were still western oh, the, people right oh yeah, yeah. what did i say city of angels city, city of ancients. ancients yeah uh yeah you're still so you start off in the in forbidden a, fortress is that one also or do you play the samurai forbidden fortress you can start in Feudal Japan okay. as Asian characters. Okay, it can also be used as another world. So right. I don't use because I don't. Feudal you don't Japan like feel is not my biggest yeah. thing. So I just turn it into another world. Mm -hmm. So it's when you pull 
when you go into a portal, what happens is there's a card for each other world. Yeah. And then you just randomize them and flip one. That's what where and the that's portal where it goes. So sometimes it'll be field of pan. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a really cool concept because yeah. it's like, because uh, you, you you would never put cowboys in any other right. situation except for well, and this <laughs> list Western. it's on this list. I mean, because if this would have been a, a fantasy game, yeah, where they went to other fantasy that's true like it's it's like okay yeah there's different planes but this is like westerns going up you know it's the one because it's like yeah well the western (sighs) times were real nothing in fantasy was ever real right so it's cool to think about yeah that's a good one like you have to travel there's travel events as well mm -hmm. that you flip and stuff happens when you're traveling yeah they've covered like the gambit of everything yeah prehistoric one that's that's a good one that's a good idea yeah all right my number is our second crossover Spirit Island. Spirit Island! Yeah, uh, pretty much everything that you've said. Just the fact that uh, it's another game that took a concept and just kind of reversed it. Um, and that you you play the spirits that are protecting your island. And the, the spirits are so 100% unique from, from each other uh, that have their own benefits. And what makes this game, in my opinion, the best cooperative game is that what your weaknesses are are my strengths and vice versa. So we, we truly have to work together because it can't be like, well, I'm the best one, so I'll just take care of everyone. It's like, nope, I can't do this as well as you can. Like, So we need to synergize our, our abilities um, in truly like thematic ways and just that overarching of like, okay. And you can even make it even more thematic by giving the colony or the, the, the settlers, yeah, the settlers, like an actual faction, they can be yeah, Australia they, or they can be yeah, Sweden or France, France and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, that yeah. gives them different behaviors um, corresponding to the type of uh, uh, allegiance that they have. Mm-hmm. So it's just it's really neat. I love Spirit Island, um, and whenever you because what I did for this is like I, I I guess subconsciously chose games that I would be able to explain to people and get them excited. Right yeah, about yeah, that's, the game. That's a good. Yeah, that's a good way of, of saying it because it's the same way with these. Yeah, yeah, and it's just. I mean, be like, hey, it's like Moana, but you're the fire chick, <laughs> whatever the fire demon at the, yeah. at the very Remember end. Remember Lost. That oh smoke, yeah, the smoke monster. Yeah, the smoke monster. Gonna... That yeah, that in the polar bear. <laughs> the polar bear's in here. No. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so Spirit Island's a, a great one. So that's yes. my number eight. All right, my number seven is the first oddball kind of theme, and I and that's what only reason I made this list. It you is mean my Shadows top. of Brimstone isn't an oddball? <laughs> well, but this one like is unique. I guess. Oh, gotcha. I guess unique would be a better term. Gotcha. It's Vault Wars. Um, okay. <laughs> and I, and and I and <laughs> what's cool about this, have you played Vault Wars? Yeah, I own it. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> I put it on here because um, there's there's that whole Storage Wars uh, thing that goes on TV. Yeah, you know, the show. Everybody loves Storage Wars and all that it. stuff. I, I know I don't like it either, but but this is a super unique theme because it's it's Storage Wars with fantasy, <clears throat> and you're doing set collection and everything, and you you are uh, auctioning off lockers, and there's bluffing and all mm. that stuff. You can, and then uh, you get the contents of the locker, and there's set collection type stuff. Um, the reason I put it on this list is just because is there another storage storage facility? Yeah, I can't think of one. <coughs> yeah, like the, okay. that's true. You that's know, it's true. Just, it's so unique a fantasy storage right locker game. That's like, yeah, where it would, that actually is centered around bidding like you would in storage wars. Right. That's funny. Yeah, that's that's and a good it, one. And the the thing is, is like the auctioneer. Set, he sets the opening bid, mm-hmm. and if nobody bets, then he gets it. Then he has, he to, buy has to see it. what's in the locker. Yeah. So that there's that whole bluffing right. deal, you know? Huh. I didn't even consider Vault Wars. I was trying to pick stuff that was unique. Yeah. That would, you know, because, like, <clears throat> there's enough people that understand what Storage Wars is. Yeah. So if you're trying to tell people, it's like, this, it's fantasy, you know, it's like elves and all yeah. this stuff, but it's like your, your Storage Wars. Right. You know? Yeah, I guess this, uh, I guess I I was trying to think of oh man. Yeah, I definitely tried not to really think of like unique ones cuz I feel like that'd be a little bit easier. Like I'm looking over at, at my shelf over there and there's smartphone ink. It's like, "Hey, unique you're making you're making phones." Uh but it's like for me, it's like I okay, we're making phones. That's cool, yeah. I guess. Uh I don't know. 
But no, I think that's I think that's a great one because that game is an absolute blast. Yeah, it's and fun. it's fantasy, which I love. Yes. All right, my number seven is another game that I actually hate more than Kingdom Death Monster. And I, I'll, I'll go back and play KDM. I think I was talking to a friend of mine who, uh, he did the whole series with me, and he, he still owns everything. And I told him, I'm like, dude, I think it's because I had a monetary tie to KDM that made me so mad on every flaw that, that is in the game. Uh, but that's not the case here. However, the theme is super cool, and that's Time Stories. So Time Stories, once again, garbage, garbage game series. However, the theme is really cool. How you play uh, as people that work, I think it's modern day or in the future or whatever, that work uh, for an agency that has some conspiracy going on. Like, there's, they know that shit's about to hit the fan in some way. And you uh, essentially go back in time as like in like these pods, but you take over receptacles of of people in that time period. So of course, the uh, the one of them is in an Arctic expedition. So you're people that are on that expedition, and you take over as as them, um, and you're trying to solve some anomaly that right. something went wrong that skewed the t the course of time. So there's a break in time or something. Um, and you have to go back and fix that, and you you have to figure out. And it's kind of like it's that Groundhog Day scenario where it's like, oh, like if I got sent back, and they're like in in like the or the Marcy case, or a zombie apocalypse is going on, and you're okay. Well, that didn't really happen, but it's gonna happen if you don't fix this this specific thing. If I got sent back, I'd be like, I, I don't know where to fucking go. Then if we fail, there will no real loss there because you just can just you can just keep jumping back. But they. At the very beginning of this whole Time Stories thing, they were doing it so right. They could have done whatever, but I don't know what happened. They just shit the bed so hard on later and later expansions. They kept doing themes that no one cared about right. um, and not even making them any any interesting. Like Arctic, Arctic Expedition, it's like, okay, who cares about that one? But that's my favorite one. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they tried to do this overarching story where it's like there were competing <laughs> factions and they, they just kept going and they never explained it. And then basically what the very final expansion should have been was a picture of the designers just flipping off everyone who bought the game because that's essentially what they did with their story. Um, and it's just, I'm, I'm going to play the new one because they made it just so I have something for my top 10 worst of 2020. Yeah, Stone Vassal like it. It essentially, because I remember <coughs> specifically, I, I've essentially wrote off time stories. It's it's so bad. Uh, but I remember like the Dice Tower, they were all still, they were like, hey, I know I'm, we're kind of still into it, but then I remember the, this latest one, the Revolution or whatever they called it. They were like, yep, we're done. And I'm like, ugh. Uh, but the theme is so cool. Yeah. They could have done so many cool things. They could have done World War One. They could have done Feudal Japan. They could have done Dinosaurs. They didn't do any of that. They, and if they wanted to make it historic, or kind of to have their cake and eat it too, do some fantasy stuff, do some histor history ones, because one of them was a cool theme. It was, uh, I think it was the Manson family, like, murders in, in Hollywood. Like, okay, like, you're, what the fuck is going on? I mean, that one still sucked too. But the theming was, was almost always cool. And just the whole concept of being able to go back in time uh, to these different events. Yeah, it could have been great. <sighs> that was on my short list. Time stories, really? Yeah. 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 I mean, I hate this game, but I, I definitely wanted to think of... It's like, man, that was really neat. It's just... And the game sucks. So, that's my number seven, time stories. All right. My number six is the game I want to own. Uh, I've played it a few times. Uh, I don't think you have... But it has a unique theme um, where you are a multi-millionaire and you are trying to lose all your money. Last Will? Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> um, have you played it? I haven't, but I, I've, I've, that could be fun. It's like yeah. a Brewster's Millions yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, it's got that theme. I, because uh, there was a, the Prod Prodigal Club. Prodigal's Club is, a, is the sequel. Hmm. Um, I saw, I, Last Will is the one I've played. Um, but it's it's so cool because it's so opposite because every game that you've played before this is you're trying to gain money yeah. to be the person with the most. Now you have all this money 
and you've just got to find the stupidest ways to just blow it. Yeah. You take your horse to dinner, <laughs> you know, and just do whatever you can to try to spend all your money and everything. Yeah. And it's a Euro game. Um, but it's just, it's just, I don't, the art's kind of weird, mm -hmm. but uh, it is a really fun game to play. It's one right. I want to try to find and pick up on the cheap sometime. Yeah, I remember, our, I think somehow that game got brought up, like, like not too long ago, I think Cat was talking about something, and I was like, oh, there's a board game where you're trying to spend as much money as possible. Um, and she's like, oh, that could be fun. Because, like, like you said, hoarding money, it's just like, oh, yeah, I have a lot of money. But you, you, it almost, you never really ever get to spend it in, right. in wacky ways, yeah. I think the expansion to this is you're, you're trying to lose your job as well. Oh really? I believe so. You're trying, trying to, you're, so you're trying to lose all your money and lose your and job. Lose your job. You're like, ah, I'm so, almost I mean, dead you're just anyway. Totally, so. It's just a total shit show, but it's hilarious. The right. stories that you can make out of it, everything. That's true. Um, yeah, it's, that's, it's, it's that's really another cool. good one. That's a good one. All right, <clears throat> my number six. <coughs> excuse me. Is a this is probably my my overarching engrossment of a theme, and I can I could have chose. Really, any any game, but this one I felt like encompassed the theme a little bit more, and it's Eldritch Horror. So had to have a Cthulhu game on my best themes list. I love the Lovecraft mythos, um, and this is kind. Of, this is my pick, but it's like it could have been Arkham Horror, it could have been Mansions of Madness, just Lovecraft in general. I love I love the stories that that are are being depicted, and Eldritch I think has the most. Um, so if you don't know, what makes what makes Elder Tor or the Arkham universe uh, so fascinating to me is you're going up against unspeakable odds, like unfathomable creatures that uh, are essentially like demigods, and you're like, how, how how can we do this? But you're not playing as heroes. You're not playing as it's not like okay, well we have Thanos who has this Infinity Gauntlet, but I'm Iron Man, or I'm not. I'm not. I'm not Silver Surfer, who has all these also great abilities. Right. You play regular people, almost. I mean, there's magic, but there's there's a cost to it. The magic is kind of grounded in reality. You're a little insane if you're doing magic, um, but you're a waitress, or a mobster, or an urchin, or some uh, homeless person, and they all have such integrated backstories into all these characters. But you're coming together to try and figure out what's happening throughout the world, especially in Elder Tor, trying to figure out what's happening around the world, um, fighting these creatures that cause you to go a little bit more insane. Uh, there's a bunch of cult stuff, and it's also set in the time period, I think the 20s, um, and I love the 20s time period um, theme, but it has a horror element as well. And just the big grandiose, okay, well, I gotta jump on the train to go over here because that's what this shit's hitting the fan over in Tokyo, so I gotta get, I gotta get there. Uh, with my pistol and my spell book I got from the library. Let's hope I can do something. It's just, it's so cool. And the, the short stories that, that are centered around, like, uh, Lovecraft, I think are fascinating <laughs> and great as well. So, yeah, I think my favorite, I guess, Lovecraftian theme mm -hmm. game is Death May Die. I almost um, picked that one. But I hadn't played it enough. The reason I brought it up, I've played it so much <laughs> the last month. I've probably played it 15 God. times. I mean, I yeah. love that game. But anyway, uh, what, what brought me up, you were talking about character back, uh, character stories and mm -hmm. stuff. Have you read many of the characters' backstories? Uh, I know we read the four <laughs> that we, we played okay. with for the run-through, but... Oh my gosh, so some of those are hilarious. Yeah, some like of them... the one-armed military guy. I didn't play with him. Oh, so funny. He didn't yeah. We had... We had um, <laughs> The girl that was, that was like a demon child. Okay. We had her. We had Rasputin. Mm -hmm. uh, his ones, they just kept trying to kill him, and he yeah. kept coming back, and he's just like all like apathetic now. <laughs> <sighs> uh, we had the doctor, I think, with the fez hat. Yeah. And then we had the crazy old man with the shotgun. See, I like, uh, yeah, Pete or whatever. Some like I, I use him and the the mili ex military guy with one arm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Those are the two I like to team up with. Yeah. There too. Well, see, that's the thing. It's like I almost pick Cthulhu Death May Die because it is such a change uh, from the rest of them. Because you are playing, you're not playing any of the people that are in every other Cthulhu right. game. But ultimately, it drew me back to Elder Tor because it is such a big epic game, 
that encompasses really everything <clears throat> else, and the characters themselves are right. also in Lovecraft stories. So really, what it came down to is okay, what game best depicts Lovecraft? This is probably the closest one I have uh, to an IP. I mean, I wouldn't really call books an IP. But it's like, free, free. Yeah, what do they, uh, what do they call it? Uh, common domain, or yeah, so uh, I wouldn't worry. Maybe. Yeah, so, uh, so yeah, that's that's my number six. It's, I mean, in all honesty, like Arkham Horror would be pretty close to because it's very centered around the city, but you get the exact same encounters and stories from Elder Tor, and this is bigger. So, good deal. <clears throat> all right, so my number five uh, is Village Attacks. Um, oh yeah, okay. Village attacks is another one, one that flips. Yeah, flips on its head. It uh, it again makes several of my lists here and there. Um, but it uh, you get to play. It's a it's a tower defense game from more more or less. But you take on the roles. It's cooperative, and you take on the roles of the evil people, um, the bad guys, the ghosts, the monsters, whatever the, <clears throat> whatever they are. Um, and you are trying to protect the heart of your castle. Um, it's scenario based. There's different scenarios and different setups for your castle. But then, um, the villagers will be coming into your castle trying to go. So you have to wipe them out. Um, and but then there's heroes that come in. And when the heroes come in, because you'll have a colored base on your mm -hmm. on your character, and <clears throat> they will have like you're their I don't know, nemesis. Archer, nemesis. Yeah, I guess that's the word. Um, so they will make a beeline for you okay over stuff so, and some of them have abilities where they move fat you know and they'll if the heart gets destroyed you lose or if you yeah. guys die and <clears throat> you're leveling up your characters you're rolling it's dice and so it's kind of like your dice for actions that you're talking about oh yeah okay. so you roll your dice and there's attack move move whatever and you get to roll them your mm -hmm. gauzy time and then you get to uh spin them to move and do your actions or special actions or whatever um it's really unique because uh, the monsters they chose are really cool and not used in a whole lot of yeah, stuff. Yeah, that's what that's what kind of drew me to it. <clears throat> right, yeah. and then also that you are playing the monster. Yeah, right. usually you're the hero is going to take out the big monsters yeah. and everything. So it kind of goes with like your the, the others or mm -hmm. stuff. Like oh that yeah, you were talking about earlier. Yeah, it's true. Um, but you are controlling these these bad guys, and they're all really unique. They have uh, there's a lot of story put into them. Yeah, you know, like on their backside of their card. Well, because aren't they aren't they like because they're not made up. They're well, they're based like on they're real, based off like real things. So they don't they have like the headless horseman and yeah, it's, it's, he's it's, called something different. It's like they couldn't get the true IP. Yeah. But his he's do, really do they have cool. Like, do they have Baba Yaga? Baba Yaga's yeah. in there. There's uh, these vampire type weird vampire. Probably Dracula. Well, it's not called Dracula. It's yeah. like these like. I can't think of what the name, but the thing I'm, I usually will always try to get the the headless horseman guy because he's his sword, this big huge whip sword, is like made out of spines. Oh god, <laughs> that's cool. People and stuff. So it's like you like look at the art. It's like all these spinal cords yeah. and stuff, and his miniature is really neat. Um, it's cool to play the bad guys. <laughs> it is. Like, it's different, you know. It's because was there a there's not a Cthulhu game that you no one plays a bad guy. Um, like no one, no one could. It's not. There's no one verse all with Cthulhu. Fate of the Elder Gods doesn't. Fate of the Elder Gods almost made this list because it, it you're the cultist, right? But so there I mean, wasn't really a whole like that was kind of it. There wasn't yeah. a whole lot of theming other other than that. But yeah, that's probably the closest where you yeah, play the bad guys. I can't think of anyway. So it's just cool, you know. You you have all these different scenarios that are in these books that do different things. Uh, with the Kickstarter that's coming, I didn't get any of the Grim Dynasty stuff. Oh, I am. Because it's all Asian. I'm gonna, yes, uh, yes, and I'm going to late pledge all that shit. So I went and I picked up so the stuff for the first Kickstarter that I didn't have because yeah. I bought mine secondhand. Um, so it is what it is on this. But you, what's what, another thing really cool is you uh, your character has these special abilities, and you can customize how they level up. So oh, like I mean, when they okay. level up and stuff, you they have these little overlays that you set on top of their previous ability, so it may take less dice to make this special ability fire Neat. off okay. and stuff. Um, oh, it's, okay, it's so... <clears throat> mm, interesting. Okay. Right, so like it may, it may take three of these symbols of dice to do this thing that, that pulls somebody towards you. Yeah. Or whatever, where if you level that up, it may just be two dice. Gotcha. Or two okay. or more common symbols or something, and you can keep leveling those Neat. up. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's just 
Yeah, it's, that's it's a really neat flip flop cooperative tower defense. That's and game. that's one actually I just bought <clears throat> like that oh, guy's play. Yeah, I, I ended up getting yeah, it. Good, you um, like it. And then uh, because the theme just sounds so so fucking cool. And then uh, I'm gonna their late pledge is open. I'm gonna get the the Grim Dynasty stuff because I think that's another one they could do. Kind of like a Shadows of Brimstone, they could do yeah. if there if there's enough enemies then they could do different time periods. The Feudal Japan one, I mean, I don't know much. I, I don't know any yeah. villains that they could... They try to base all the monsters off of, like... Like... Like actual... Like actual folk, folk, folk tales. Folk yeah. tales stuff, so... I mean, it explains it on the back. Like, the back side of the card has this whole... Cool. Talking about their stories cool. and stuff. But awesome. Yeah, um, it's it's just a really cool... It was one that I just picked up. I think I got from Chad because Chad backed mm. the Kickstarter. That's right. And he played it one time and then was done with it. And so I bought it. He's like, all right, I got it. Got my, um, got my fix. Because he didn't like away. it and I loved it. Yeah. So then I just started playing solo after that. And it's it's a really good one. Cool, 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 cool. My number five is a game that you still need to play. I don't think you have yet. Uh, we'll have to play it together at some point. Um, this is kind of an amalgamation of a bunch of different other IPs. It's not an IP in and of itself, but it, this is Deep Madness. Nope, I haven't played that one yet. So, Deep Madness, the reason why I say it's amalgamation is because it has it has the closest relation to a video game called, called Dead Space, um, but there's like a little bit of Alien in there and a little bit of uh, those are the only two I can think of off the top of my head, but essentially you play as a crew that's being called to a uh, facility that's actually underwater. Um, hence the deep part. Uh, but when you get there, you kind of you come to find out that something crazy has gone wrong, and there's these all all these now horrific monsters uh, and radically different beings that all have different different abilities. The characters that you play, I think that's kind of where the alien, because there's literally it, uh, her character's name is Amanda Weaver, so it's it's <laughs> it's like it's very much Sigourney Weaver, and her ability <coughs> is she has. Uh, a cat and a cat token that can distract and call the the enemies to them, um, but she takes insanity for it. But but yeah, so you you go into this underwater facility um, to try and figure out what happens, and then the the game is scenario based. So in each scenario, has there's a lot of reading, a lot of text in this to engross you and immerse you into the uh, the story. But what makes this even cooler than just kind of your random dungeon crawl? is the fact that they incorporate flood, flooding. So, like, over time, your, uh, well, two things. One, your tiles can start out normal, but eventually they will flip to a darker, grittier, gorier side. That's kind of, I, I don't know yet if that's what's happening, if the, the room is really getting, like, covered in, like, blood vessels and vines, or if that's just what our minds are kind of seeing. Mm -hmm. Or if that's what it, it, it really is, but our minds are seeing it clean. I, I don't know yet. Uh, but then they also have the flooding, so you have to incorporate the fact that, oh, yes, this is an underwater, ti uh, underwater facility, so now we're having to deal with that, as well as the monsters who can just swim and run right through it. But, yeah, there's, there's so much, uh, uh, like... What was it? What was I gonna say? Uh, it's not. It's not. It's like callbacks, like the fact that one of the characters literally looks like Isaac from Dead Space. Right. There's one that is, I think, the guy from <laughs> Half Life. Um, there's, I think, a bunch of people from Alien. So there, you can definitely tell that there's a lot of love for those different IPs. But I, I really enjoy that type of tight, claustrophobic facility feeling um, with these horrifying creatures uh, and an overarching story that I'm not gonna spoil here, but. Um, there's so much to this to this game, and so much, so many of like a lot of the consciousness cards or the mat, uh, that you can find that you or the uh, that you can draw. They're essentially like when you're playing a video game, like let's we'll say Fallout, and you come across a book or or a computer screen. It's like a little snippet of lore. Right. That's what they have in in X. Of, like the consciousness deck is like that big, um, and that's how they read. Like there's no flow of those, but the more the cards you draw, they're like a little bit more info into like the the theme and the world of this game so yeah that's it i mean horror horror themes just do it for me so that's my number five all right yeah i'll need to play that sometime <clears throat> i think you would like it i'm sure i would <laughs> um, i don't think you would get it though right it, it's very this is one of the kind of this is like your 
amalgamation of a Kickstarter game. A lot of fiddly pieces, yeah. but it, it flows pretty well. All right, my number four is probably my last, like, light-hearted theme okay. on this. Um, I, think I don't know, everything. Vault Wars Man is pretty... Well, this is right along the lines. <laughs> That's Bargain Quest. Oh, okay. I do have that one. <laughs> um, Bargain Quest caught me off guard. I, I'd seen it. I didn't do the Kickstarter or anything. I saw it at Origins mm -hmm. when I was there. Didn't get it, but Robert had picked it up yeah. when we played at Robert's, and... and uh, it was really cool because you're a shop owner, you're competing shop owners, mm -hmm. and you're <clears throat> you get these items, and you can uh, your hand of cards or whatever. You have these items in your shop. You can put something in the window, and depending on how you level things up, you can put more things in sure. your windows um, to try to lure these heroes that are up here to buy your equipment. Um, they have money on them when they come out onto this row, and then they come in and they'll buy your stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's how you get your money. And then you get, I mean, if they're using your equipment, there's a monster that they go in and they fight. And if they do damage, I if believe the, if, you get... Yeah, I actually, I played this last week. Oh, perfect. Week. <laughs> you have the freshest memory. Yeah, I do. Because I think if they, if, if they do if damage, they, then we get... If they do a damage and they survive, you essentially get two points total for every encounter. Right. So, so yeah. So, I mean, and I've only done the base game. I have all the expansions. Mm -hmm. I just haven't played those. Yeah, they're, um, they're really mini expansions. Like, right. the black market still really isn't that, that right. much. I want to try the solo deal because I haven't oh, done I that haven't one yet. I haven't tried that, yeah. Um, but anyway, it's just, it's just unique because you're a shop owner. You're trying to... You're just running a shop trying to get these celebrity yeah. uh, warriors to come into your deal and buy your cool shit. And yeah. It's actually pretty cool, too, because <laughs> the, the heroes are... I mean, they're they're like a, they're a role. So it's like the warrior, or not, not the warrior, the, the berserker, for example. Like, if you sell him something that doesn't have like an attack symbol on it, it does right. nothing right. for him. So he's just like, what the fuck is this? Um, there was one guy. He was a like unarmed monk, and he was he was pretty good with attack and defense. But like, you couldn't give him items, right. or you couldn't give him like weapons. Right. Um. So, but sometimes it's like. Depending, because like you said, you're competing. This isn't on my list, but since right, I just right, played right. it, um, <clears throat> since you're competing shop owners, what you put in your display has a heart value, which whoever has the highest, they get to pick their person. Um, but they can only pick someone or sell cards that they have the same matching symbols. Right. Which is thematic because it's like if someone comes in, they're like, "Oh, what's this wand the in here?" Not going to go to a bow and arrow shop. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> uh, but sometimes if if you have not the most appealing thing, because you want to sell because you can't sell what's in your display mm -hmm. then you're like oh man but i want to sell this to them but sometimes right. they might the oh, they might go to different shops and then you get the person that you're like he's like well what do you got you're like dude i got this leaf it does <laughs> nothing man but this is all i can sell to you yeah. well and, like, and then he ends up going out and fighting and dies right, and you're right. like great well and you get like uh because you can hire employees yeah, they work in your shop and give you benefits and stuff. You can That's hire a you can hire a, a shop cat or a shop dog, and it gives you an extra heart. <laughs> right. Um, but you can't have both. Like yeah. you can only have one. Um, there was one I got. It's funny because I I literally played this last That's week. Good. Uh, and one of the because one of the employees I got was like a some like like it, it, I can't remember what they called her, but it was like some like really ecstatic uh, female, and her ability was you can actually sell what's in your display. Mm -hmm. And I was like, ooh, great. So she, like, freaked out of what was in the display and, like, made, like, so upsold it to where you were able to actually... Like, there's a lot of theme in this game. There is. And, that, that, and it's... So it fits in my unique. Mm -hmm. And it's a fun theme. Yeah. And it's just... It brings in the fantasy, but it's a different way of fantasy. Like, yeah. you're not actually the warriors. You're just the little yeah. people that normally in the background of adventure movies right. and stuff that... That are <laughs> well, it to to talk up. I mean that selection because that's a good one. Is uh, that same night we played Bargain Quest first, and then we played Detective, um, the modern crime board game by yeah. Portal. Uh, and the people I was playing with, they both they loved both of them, but they kept talking about Bargain Quest. That's good. So that's a good one. <clears throat> My number four is the closest one I have to essentially an IP, and I'm pretty sure it's not. Uh, actually called this because otherwise they would have been sued by the company most likely, and that's Nemesis. Oh God! So yeah, and Nemesis, it's not Alien. <laughs> might as well be. It might as well be, but it is not Alien. As far as I know, the the Nemesis, the intruders in this, 
do not have the mouth. <laughs> the I mouth think that's inside. The one probably trademark to the enemy, bro. <laughs> like, <laughs> like look, you can take our you can take our <laughs> xenomorphs, but you can't have the mouth. Um No, I mean essentially I love the alien movies. This is really close to to that. Uh, essentially what? You like Aliens 4, don't you? It's, dude, it's actually the best. It's Alien 4 as the best one, then Alien <laughs> Covenant, um, and then Alien 3. <laughs> uh, Prometheus, <laughs> Alien 1, then Alien 2. That's really that's really how it goes. Uh, obviously reverse that. That's, that's actually how the... Actually, it should be... It's Aliens, Alien 1, and then the other ones don't exist. Um, so... Uh, but yeah, so essentially, you play as members of of a crew that get uh, that get woken up mid mid um, mid transit or whatever, uh, and you see like the body of one of your one of your uh, crewmates dead. So you're trying to figure out, and you still you have uh, you have objectives that you have to to meet that are thematic. They can either be for your personal objective or your corporate objective. Um, essentially, the personal one you kind of pick. It's like the personal one is okay. It's gonna be fully cooperative, or if you pick the corporate one, that's gonna make you dick over someone in some way, similar to the uh, AI or the the, the android right, um, in right. the first one. Uh, but we, so 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 you're moving around the ship, and then of course at some point the intruders are gonna show up. And you have to run through these corridors and uh, go to different spots of the ship. You can either go to the engines to see if they're all functional. Um, you go to the control panel to see if you're actually heading to the right destination you need to. Some of them, if they're corporate, it's like, hey, make sure player three doesn't doesn't survive. Well, you can't outright kill them. You have to uh, passively do it. You either have, if they're stuck in the room with like the intruder queen, you can shut the door because you have to have specific cards that let right. you that let you unlock it. So if you have a card that lets you shut it, well, most likely that now they're trapped. Um, there's ones where like if they're trying to get into an escape pod, if there's no intruders in that room, then they get in. But if one shows up, it pulls them out. So you can actually do things like if they get in an escape pod, you can make noise in a room that causes an intruder to move in. Well, now they get yanked out of the... So everything that you kind of do in this game is surrounded to the overall theme, which is xenomorphs, really. But intruders are uh, attacking the ship, and you're, strugg- you're, you're trying to survive. And with the noise and all that, it's very, very, very... Um, once again, claustrophobic. Can they come up with a cooler name than intruders? Yeah, I know mean, because they like they come up with something weird, just something funky. They could have, um, but I mean, it's kind of it comes down to like the simplistic nature of it. If mm-hmm. they, if you were woke up on a ship, you wouldn't be sitting there. What should we call these things? Some scary motherfuckers. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> uh, like I'd probably call them something basic, like intruders, <laughs> or I well, I would. I'd probably just hide in my pod. And just hope. <laughs> Be like, I hope my my te- my crewmates don't kill me. <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah. Nemesis is fantastic, and the the reason why it's so high is just because it, it is alien, and I love the first two movies. Yep. Three actually isn't the worst. Three's not horrible. Um, but it it's not the best either. I don't know what happened. They should have just ended it at two. So yeah, my number four is Nemesis. All right, my number three. The the world of this game is what drew me to it, and then the gameplay ended up living up to it. Um, and I had mentioned it, well, it's been on tons of my lists, that's Android Netrunner. Mm, um, okay. The Android universe um, that Fantasy Flight has come up with um, is is crazy. It's cyberpunk. Yeah, I was um, It's... Uh, the, the, all the all these corporations are tried monopolizing stuff, and they are they're inherently not good. Right. <laughs> you know, they're what? Dirty, dirty no. Um, and they're trying to. Pass You're telling these... me Walmart, Disney, <laughs> and all these companies, <laughs> and they're trying to uh, Amazon <laughs> get all these corporate corporate agendas through that are gonna be good for them and bad for everybody else, and then you. There are these these un, these groups of people that are called runners. They're mm-hmm. the computer computer hackers that are trying to break into their servers through computers and steal the information and yeah. put it out to the public for 
that can do it. I mean, that's the, the theme of the game, and the, it's a 1v1 game, and the, the corporation, <clears throat> it's almost kind of abstract in a way, because when you're trying to get to their information, there there's lanes and they're putting down like almost like firewalls mm-hmm. of computer stuff yeah, and you're, it's, and you're the, using virus programs to try to break through yeah because the game isn't <clears throat> them physically running to no, the, no. the corporate and breaking yeah, it's in all right it's all hacking. okay uh yeah. so like because there's a game down. um did you ever play mirror's edge like the video I game know, mirror's I know edge the video game that's is. essentially kind of the same yeah. thing but they're they're parkour physically right, running into right. the building and because you say lanes and you're like oh they're called runners and it's like well, do we actually go into yeah. the, like, is yeah. it because the runners they're not like they're on a computer terminal okay. doing this. They're using they're they're installing programs that are trying to go through the they call it ICE. It's the protect to protect their servers. Okay. Because when you're when you're playing this game, all the information that the court puts out are in servers, which is the lane, and to get access to that hidden thing, because everything goes down face down, or mm-hmm. or if you need to destroy something, it's face up. And you have to break through all their protective computer firewalls or whatever yeah. to get to that and then destroy it. It's it's just a really cool. It's not just a future game. It's like with the computers and the hacking and, yeah. and all that craziness and just all the variety that they have. The game is not a thing anymore, but but the world is. It's, Android it's funny Android has been in a lot of been used in a lot of games and yeah. stuff and it's funny because as we were just talking about it it made me want to play it like I was sitting here and I'm like man that, that, that does sound it's fun it's such a good game right but it's dead yeah, and it it's is. dead forever until it comes back without the android theme it really could that's the thing like it, why it why didn't actually. they just sit there and be like oh okay well we'll just take Ant. why don't they just call it Netrunner <laughs> well there, there was a because I'm sure that <laughs> there was a rumor that when it got when uh, um, the place that owned it, uh, Watsi or whatever, that had the the I don't I don't know mechanics. It. Oh, okay. Trademarked or whatever, or the uh, bought out. They were there was a rumor that Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven was going to be redone oh, with I that see. with that engine, but it wasn't obviously because yeah. it would have already been done by now. That's the true. game coming out. Yeah. But anyway, uh, Android Netrunner. It's it's a awesome awesome Cyberpunk theme. Great All right, me. my number three uh, is the game. Mm, no, never mind. I was what well, I was gonna say is not actually true, but <laughs> is is a game that also flips the concept of uh, of really most themes on its head, and that's this War of Mine. Yeah. Um. So this War of Mine is once again instead of in most games, uh, you play as the soldiers. Um, that are in the war, and you have to deal with that, but in this case, you actually are playing as the casualties of war, which are the, uh, kind of the, the civilians, and that are trying to survive in a war-torn city to do the best that they can, um, and it's, like, it's the fact that the, the, the war is, is pro, like, is, it's prolonged, and there's actually a, uh, a forum on Board Game Geek that, um, apparently, from what from what the guy was telling me, that this is actually based off of real life war, um, and this guy actually lives through that war. Um, I really, really need to sit down and actually just go over that because it's such a cool uh, uh, forum and, and uh, story that that this that this guy tells. But essentially, yeah, yeah, the the entire game is set around you are in a house with other people that you don't know, but you're essentially this family that you like. You know, well, there's no one else. It's just we have this guy who does nothing. His name's Anton, and then everyone else who's contributing. So, but all these characters have personalities and and things about them, quirks and 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 uh, faults like <clears throat> addictions and things. So. Then it's like, well, we're regular people. None of us are soldiers, but okay, it's nighttime. Well, we need to go get supplies. So I guess we'll you stay watch. You can rest because your legs fucked up, and the rest of us will go out and try and scavenge somewhere. And you have these incredibly horrifying and sometimes good, but sometimes morally fucked up situations where it's like you you come across in like a hotel, and you like you can decide, okay, do we want to peek through this hole because we hear someone. Yeah, let's do that. Oh, it's actually this mother bringing her daughter to this doctor to 
because she's pregnant, she okay. Well, it's, you're going to get an abortion because I, we can't raise this kid in this life. Uh, there's others where it's like kids have some food. Do you take the food or do you right. like? Yeah. And you, you come up with all these moral moral consequences that you actually feel the ramifications of your choices. It's like yeah, we could, but then you come to find out that later on the kids died. Uh, I mean, and it's not, it's not all just grim. There is like some uplifting things, but it's very, it's the phase, very basic minimal that, that you can only understand or you can only try to sympathize uh, with those types of stories where it's like, man, uh, we found a guitar, like an every, oh, not an everyday item, but an item that is usually taken for granted. And it's like, oh, wow, you played music and now we're, we want to kill ourselves for the next five minutes. Um, just everything about this game is just en extremely engrossing. And the fact that if the if the theme is truly a depiction of that story that the guy was telling, or if this is very closely related, I don't know. But yeah, it's it's such a fantastic theme. All right, that's yeah. my number two. Yeah, it's a, it's a good one for sure. I, it was close to being on my list. I wasn't sure if it was gonna be <clears throat> or um, not. No, these next two were were definitely my one twos from the get go. So gotcha. Um, my number two was another one that I thought might be on your list. Um, it is a game I just started playing this year. Um, it's solo only. And it's, uh, oh, it's solo only? Yeah. Oh, proving grounds. No. <laughs> it's like Hostage I... Negotiator. Oh, oh, um, that's a good one. There, There is no other games that fit that, that theme yeah. that I can, that are any good or that I know of anyway. Yeah. Um, and that's, I, this is with this is this high on the list even without me playing the career part because the career, career part's really gonna do, really gonna push it up even higher for me. Um, but you know why that that's not on this list for me <laughs> is because I haven't um, updated my board game geek uh, collection. Oh yeah. Um, and I in in a while I actually need to, but that's. Uh, because that's usually how I come up with sometimes a lot of my lists. Right. I'll go through my collection and be like, oh, this one, this one, this one. Um, yeah, and that's not on there. It is now. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, it's it's a solo-only game, which was intrigued me anyway because I play solo games quite a bit. And I don't know why it took me so long to get it initially because mm -hmm. they had the original Kickstarter and then the second Kickstarter, and I didn't even get on on that. Yeah. I didn't even do the third Kickstarter because I didn't play this until after the second Kickstarter came out with Crime Wave, and I bought it secondhand off somebody, and then I had to buy the yeah this. But anyway, you're you are a, a hostage negotiator, and you choose you choose a a uh, criminal, mm -hmm. and they have their own setup and their own levels of how how many hostages they have, what the storyline is, that each one plays differently. And then you, uh, you roll, or you play cards. You, it's it's got this a cool little, not really deck building, but you're kind of hand building. Yeah, you're kind of pulling. Building, yeah. You, you buy card, you know, and stuff, and because you don't, yeah, because you don't draw cards. Right, so just, right. Yeah, so I'd, I'd say hand building. And you're rolling dice, and and, and what's and cool is that the dice kind of represent. Because there's ways to mitigate it, mm -hmm. and there's ways to turn other dice into successes. So it's not pure luck, but what you're buying. Um, from the ever and the rows open, right. so you can like, it's it's kind of like the cards that are open are like as you because it's not like you're new at the job. Right. Like thematically, you are a successful hostage negotiator. Um, so it's like okay, well, like it, yeah, man. You know, honestly, that probably would either be up to four or five. Yeah, if I if I had thought about it. Well, and what I like is that it doesn't because all all the card uh, ten or twelve cards I can't remember are all face up in front of you mm -hmm. and you have three that don't cost anything that you start with yeah. I think or something yeah. but you can play as many cards as you want mm -hmm. on your turn but when you play them you can't use them because they're in like a dead pile yeah. until they refresh after that next turn so you really have to think and all the while you're getting these stupid cards that are making them get more pissy yeah, and then, and that's what the dice kind of represent yeah. was because I mean no, there's never a cool, calm, collected ho hostage uh, um, uh, abductor, right? Like, uh, so the dice are kind of meant to represent how swingy mm -hmm. or uh, unpredictable that you could be like, hey, dude, like, uh, I I don't know, like, 
you know, I'm your only friend here. I don't fucking have friends! And you're like, wait a minute! And it's all notated with that track. Yeah. Because the further over the back to the left that you are, the more dice you get. Mm-hmm. Just the opposite. Yeah, the more dice you have, because that means he's not as... Yeah, he's kind of more, he's, he's more, he's a more ready to give up. Yeah. Talk, yeah. But then the more pissed he gets, the less dice you have, yeah. and then it gets harder to talk yeah. him down. It's, it's just, for it being such a simple game of just 12 cards and yeah. a few dice and stuff, there's a lot of cool stuff, and I can't wait to dig into the career. The career is so good. Because there's just all kinds like, of... Like, if you think it's thematic yeah. now... Right, right, like, exactly. The career progresses you essentially through ten years, um, and it's like divorce, like events. You can you can have like personal or... events, and then you have like a career that you're trying to you can be up on, and then that gives you some benefits. You can find people that uh, you know they can that can help you. Um, the The people that come out like they get added later on, and mm-hmm. so you don't like it. It I mean, really, it does what. You, you play 10 games of Hostile Negotiator, almost in a row. Mm-hmm. But the game doesn't actually last that long. Uh, so, you know how we were talking about like earlier with Near and Far? It's like, te- play 10 games of Near and Far in a row, and whoever has the most points wins. Right. It's like, that's a bad way of doing a campaign. The career one of well, Hostile Negotiator puts all those story elements that make right. give you a reason of why you're uh, potentially doing this this particular abductor. Yeah. And that's it's just Van Ryder. You know, it, it hit a home run with this. Their their crime games are pretty, pretty sweet. For Detective the most part City of Angels is. Well, I haven't played that, but I'm talking like Big Score. Uh, oh, I guess okay, yeah, that was kind of like a game. crime thing. Uh, like, yeah, you know what I'm saying. But, but this is to me, this is their best game they've they've come out with. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Do you like those detective kind of games, the Sherlock Holmes? The I really haven't played a okay. whole lot of them. I, um, I want to try the City of Angels at some. City point. of Angels one is really cool because um, once again, like every Chronicles of Crime. Have you right. played that one? Yeah. Okay, so Chronicles of Crime, um, detective, modern crime board game, um, and Sherlock Holmes. Like all those are everyone's working together, but uh-huh. the City of Angels one is there's a chisel and right, it's right. like yeah. it's so it's so <clears throat> neat. Yeah, Van Ryder Games just yeah. knows how to do and, it, and, and then the final girl. Yeah, and that's be, oh god, that's going to be the best I think, as long as they. I mean, because the horror theme might push it over the negotiator theme. I I think they're taking think everything I'm, from Hostage Negotiator and they're adding more. Yeah, I think I don't know. Hostage <laughs> Negotiator might still put it above because it's it's a it's a more realistic one. Yeah, like than the oh wow, it's Jason Voorhees going after this. Or this was this badass. Yeah, it'll just depend survivor. on his career deal too. But I right, I don't know. And and you know, I have that reputation here of being the solo guy, and I don't know why it took me so long to get in the right. hostage negotiator. But damn, it's yeah, it's a it's, fun game, and it's not easy. No, it's a damn no. hard game. I mean, it's to, it's hard mainly because of the <clears> dice. <throat> like, yeah. there's not it's not true mitigation where you can always get what you want. If you roll blanks, you roll blanks. Um, I think that's it's still kind of a dated system, but, but at least it's, it's not pure. Just it runs with that what the theme though, because I, yeah, it's, it's really hard to talk somebody that's going that's off the, yeah, off the deep end. Yeah, yeah, so it's like you really are struggling, you know. Right, but but yeah, that's, that's a good. That's a really good <clears throat> one. Um, kicking myself that I didn't think of that one. Uh, that would definitely knock the others off for sure uh, to make room for. Um, for that one on the list, but oh well. My number two is probably one that you think is my number one. I don't have a clue what your one or two is. Oh, okay. Well, my number two. I figured you would have thought uh, Tainted Grail is my number two. Oh, okay. Out of a lot of the themes, this one almost made my number one spot. But yeah, we'll talk about my number one obviously when we get there. Tainted Grail essentially um, is such a unique theme because it's a it, it's Arthurian legend, but it has kind of that Dark Souls-esque where darkness, or what they call weirdness, is enveloping the land. Um, and this is not a, a fun world to live in. It's it's a very dark and grim uh, survival-esque kind of, uh, like kind of world where you are... Okay, well, there were heroes in the Arthurian legend. They vanish. You don't know what happened to them. So you play... Their apprentices, or you're you're in some way connected to one of the four heroes. The four starting people uh, are kind of at least re- they're not related to, but they know some of the heroes, and they're like, okay, well, where'd they go? So then you go off to try and figure out what's happening. Um, and as you are 
are exploring the land, you you start to realize, okay, well, here's what's happening over in this town, and then right. there's there's this uh, like this area that has a whole bunch of lore surrounding it, and you you're trying to figure out, okay, well, why is the world the way it is? Where did this weirdness come from? Um, does it kill people immediately? No, it just it can kind of you know fuck with them in some way. Like, uh, and actually they have a video game on Steam for Tainted Grail now, and I played I played it. I because I, I got with um the Kickstarter, I got like a promo, like a like a, a code beta code, um, and one of the people that you can talk to in that he was explaining that as he was walking through the weirdness, his armor fused to his skin. <laughs> And he was like this drunk, and he smelled like ass because he couldn't wash himself. Right. Um, so it's just it's extremely mysterious. But your the more you explore, and then the fact that you can dig deeper, you can kind of figure out. Okay, well, this is I feel like what started to happening. And then there's all these different uh, ancient creatures that you uh, that are incor uh, incorporated into the the story. Um, and the fact that it's King Arthur, so there is the the Holy Grail, there is uh, you know Excalibur and stuff like that, Lancelot, all these different people from that type of uh, folk tale, um, that is in the story. But it's such a completely different telling that I've never seen anyone actually uh, do. Normally, it's yeah. King Arthur, yeah. but man, and I I just I love the King Arthur and Dark Souls merge mm -hmm. i it's it's such it's so fantastic i uh, the every time i play this game i want to just know more and i'm like um it's like okay how are they going to twist like the lady of the lake and things like that and without giving too much away of what what the story is it's like where i'm at i'm just like what is going on and no not no not only to mention that the game is fantastic in, in its deck building and then also the choice based aspect right. of it uh I just want to be. I just want to know more about this world. So, that's my number two, Tainted Grail. All right. Do you know what my number one is? Is it a crossover? No. <clears throat> Orleans. <laughs> I don't think you played it. Oh, okay. Well, then I would have no idea. You have it though. I have it. Is yeah. it Quacks of Quedlinburg? Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> I have it, but I haven't played it. Yes. Ugh. Man, then it's I'll, not on the shelf. Okay, I'm like, it's well, packed. most of it's all packed to her right now. Yeah. Anyway, um, I have no idea. It is Vindication. Oh yeah, I I thought of Vindication <laughs> earlier, and I was like, oh, that's gonna be on this yeah. list. Uh, Vindication is, it's. A unique style. It, it takes place kind of in a. It would be future, obviously, because what happens is you are a uh, an individual, or if you're playing the multiplayer version, mm -hmm. which is the most common, you're getting put down on this island because you are a scum. You're just scum. You're you're a horrible human being. <clears throat> you get put down on this um, planet that uh, is just. There's no other humans on there really, except for the other. Scum. <laughs> I don't know why this one planet necessarily was where you go, but the whole point of the game is you are uh, exploring the, the the planet, and you are um, doing things that uh, improves your your prestige or, or however you want to say it. You, you're, you're becoming a better person. You're doing good deeds. Uh, you're killing monsters. You're you're Doing stuff and for the game, you're 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 vindicating yourself. You're you're wanting to become a good person, you know. That way you can maybe go back up into the <laughs> maybe you can get right. off the island, right? Um, so there's the it, the thing with this game. I mean, the art's crazy in this game too. But um, you're going around. It's like a hex board, and as you go to different places, there's different things you can do. You're going to be able to exchange cubes around here because your your player board. It's like your hands and stuff, and there's like this energy that you're filtering through, that you, and some things take certain energies to do and everything. But um, but I, I just the, just the the theme of being a horrible human being when you mm -hmm. when the game starts, and then you are doing stuff, and you're you're you, you don't fight the other people right on the board. You're just doing your own things. You can block them. There's interaction when mm -hmm. blocking and doing different stuff, but you're improving yourself 
by doing all this cool stuff. And I think the the one thing I like about this game the most is the um, the game ending condition, because as you're going up the scoring track, um, there's like one way that the game ends, you know, if one person has control of three purple spaces, or hexes, or whatever. But then once once somebody passes this threshold on the scoring track, another game ending condition card comes out. So then there's two ways that the game can end. You know, it's just, so it's kind of like, you know, it could end really quick. Yeah. But you're pushing <clears throat> yourself towards, your only way you could get up there to make those things happen is by doing good stuff. Okay. Because that, that track is like your I can't think of the term that they use, right? Prestige or or whatever, but but yeah, just the uniqueness of being you're. I think you're literally called scum <laughs> uh, at the okay. beginning. Your your thing is scum. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then you become the I can't remember what they the vindicated. I think is the very end. Yeah. Um. But uh. But it's really neat. You know, it's a, it's a Euro game with with some. Ameritrash elements, but there's no dice. Yeah. Stuff like that, so it's really skill-based. Right. Um, but yeah, it's really neat. It's it's a good one you need to try something. Yeah, it's it's definitely, I mean, it's on the shelf uh, to to play, and that's that's always been a, a that's a pretty interesting theme um, that I don't think anyone, not really, there's, there's nothing that I can think of that, that touches even close to that, where it's like, you want to better yourself. Right. Um, and it's not like it's not one of those games where it's like, well, what if I want to stay bad? It's like, well, you're not going to win. <laughs> right. Like you're you you are trying to be a better person. So yeah, I'm excited. To, I'm excited to try that one. Do you know what my number one is? Have I played it? No, and I don't think you will ever play it. <laughs> uh, it is I'll, I'll, the only hint I can honestly give you without truly giving away. It, it is the closest to a real world example than this war of mine. <laughs> Forty-four. <laughs> no, I don't know. CO two second oh, okay. chance. Yeah. This one, it's kind of honestly really an anticlimactic number one, but this is one of those things that me for me personally is uh, something that I'm actually very passionate about, which is climate change. Um, <clears throat> and out of all of these games, like this one. I mean, of course, this war of mine. Like, none, uh, most of these games are obviously fictional. Um, this war of mine is the closest one to being reality. But even then, this I, I've never been to war. I've never been in a war <laughs> torn city, so I can't. I can't really, uh, um, you know, sympathize with that. You have lived through COVID. <laughs> I, I oh. am living through that right now, but <laughs> no, it's not even remotely close to any of that. <laughs> but with CO two, just the fact of of the the emissions and and the way the the uh, resources that we burn um, that are affecting a, a lot of things in a, in a grand scale um, and will continue to do so and have hor horrible ramifications in the future this game <clears throat> you are essentially battling against that and everything that you do in this game has some thematic tie-in like the fact that you're getting scientists that are that go to uh, like factories to to work uh, to study that factory of whatever it's, and there the, all the factories that you that you build are to better climate change, recycling, we know wind, solar, uh, and uh, forestation. So there's all those, but then they can go to conferences, and you have all these objectives that you're trying to meet. Um, and this game is so brutally hard, like because you have to be so efficient and meticulous about the actions that you're doing. Um, to be able to essentially flip the objectives to be like, okay, well, we're meeting this, but each each country or each, each continent is wanting certain, you know, okay, well, uh, North America happens to want solar and wind and water. Those are the three that they want, whereas this one wants recycling. And, and so you're trying to meet everyone's demands, but it's like, well, Australia doesn't really emit that much right now, but North America is really hitting us hard, so we're going to focus on them. There's just so many real world aspects, and here's here's what what solidified this as my number one. By design, Vital Lasarda has made it to where even with the perfect planning, the way that some tiles can come out, you can still lose. Mm -hmm. And I remember reading about that, and I was like, oh, I don't know if I like that. But the depressing reality to to this game is that. 
like if if you're incorporating it into real world circumstances, is that we might already shit it like shit has already hit the fan. We might right. be too far gone that no matter what we do now could just have you know it's like well sorry you're too little too late. And that you now that's not always in this game, but sometimes like I've played this game where we won and we mm-hmm. did pretty well, but then another one where it's like we we jumped way because uh, four station is is the hardest one to actually complete. But we were doing everything so well that we were, that we're like, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna kick ass. And by the time we got it, because it's broken up into twenty twenty, I think thirty, forty, and fifty. Because you have like right. four rounds. Uh, we lost in the second round in twenty thirty because it's like we focused so hard on forestation, but we weren't meeting any of the country's actual demands. So right. they were still they're like, well, we didn't want forestation, so we're still gonna be using fossil fuels. It's a uh, yeah, and. Um, and like the the tagline is the you know, CO two second chance because right. it's like hey okay well we we only really got this last time to get it complete so is it cooperative it is so see the first one was first one first was not one was cooperative it was okay. competitive there is a competitive nature to this <clears throat> I have not played it okay. I think that that's just stupid yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um I the the cooper there there is like there is kind of a competitive nature to it where it's like you can't talk about like some of the cards in your hand. Mm-hmm. We don't do that. We just like, okay, well, what do we need to do to meet yeah. different objectives? Well, because as I said, the first one was was competitive, but it was kind of semi-cooperative right. parts. This, yeah. So this one's just going straight this one's cooperative. This straight cooperative. Um, gotcha. And if it was not straight cooperative, this wouldn't even be on the list because right. I still want to, I still got to kind of like the game. And um, because of the fact that it's like everyone is now trying to work together to meet the need meet the needs of the of the scenario excuse me that it, it just elevates it to such a unfortunately realistic um type of theme that i actually can can uh empathize with right so yeah that's why i put it as my number one so what we end up with two crossover we ended up with two crossover spirit island and fire team zero i thought this war of mine was going to be on your list yeah, it was it was around there. I figured Hostage Negotiator was going to be that was my <laughs> completely forgot, <laughs> completely forgot. It it retroactively is on my list. But that's it, everyone. Those are our top ten best themes. Let us know what themes you think are the best in the comments below. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you. Hey everyone, thank you for watching and I really hope that you enjoyed the video. If you would like to see more of my content, go ahead and click that subscribe button and the bell to be notified whenever I upload any new content. If you feel like supporting the channel, you can go ahead and click that Patreon link to be taken to my Patreon and any help is truly appreciated. Other than that, stick around for any any other run-throughs or reviews or cool top tens or whatever I feel like putting on. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you.